Hey guys, this is Anthony Morricanti from AnthonyMorricanti.com. This is episode 92 of Lightroom Quick Tips. In this episode, I'm going to give you some tips on optimizing Lightroom's performance. I get emails from people all the time. They're telling me that their Lightroom is slow, it's sluggish, it locks up. Well, if that's happening to you, hopefully one of these tips will help you get Lightroom running much better. Now, there's a number of tips and they're in no particular order. The first thing we're going to talk about is Lightroom previews. Lightroom pr produces a lot of different size previews for various functionalities that are inside of Lightroom. Now, the most obvious thing you might find is if you're on an image, and this happens more often in the develop module, but it will happen in all the modules. If you're on an image and you click to another image, you might find loading down here. And it might be there a really long time. On my computer, it was only there a few seconds and didn't even appear on that image. So what you'll see is you click from image to image. It may take a long time for the image to render. Well, what is happening is Lightroom is creating a preview for you to see the image. And there's a thing you could do during import which will help this go much faster. Now there is some drawbacks and we're going to talk about that in a minute. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring up the import dialog and if you go over here on the right panel you could see at the very top it says build previews and I have it set to minimal. That isn't the best thing to have. If I open up this drop down you'll see that there's four choices. The first two minimal and embedded are actually created by your camera. Lightroom has nothing to do with those. That sidecar, what happens there is Lightroom is taking the embedded preview that is in the file that was created by your camera and it's just copying that and making a sidecar. And that doesn't take a lot of computing power and Lightroom really isn't creating the preview, it's just copying the preview from that that is embedded in the file already by your camera. The next one is standard, so Lightroom's going to create a standard preview. The other one is one-to-one. -one. If you create one-to-one -one previews when you import your images, what will happen is Lightroom will automatically create that one-to-one -one preview, which is a high-definition preview. It's also going to create standard preview with it. And it's also going to include the embedded and sidecar preview that your camera created. So it's going to have all these different sizes. And the advantage now is Lightroom won't have to create new previews as you're in the middle of processing or in the middle of uh, you know the library module moving images around or looking through culling images it won't be able, it won't have to create these previews so it'll work much quicker now there's two downsides to this one-to-one -one previews take up a lot of disk space so if you have limited disk space i don't recommend you use one-to-one -one previews because it's going to really eat up disk space the other downside is when you're importing, Lightroom is going through a lot of work here. It's creating a one-to-one -one preview and a standard preview, and it's also copying that embedded preview, so it has a sidecar preview as well. And when it does that, it takes a lot of time. So your imports are going to take a long, long time. So your imports will be slower. You're going to use up a lot of disk space, but Lightroom will run much quicker. So if you have a lot of disk space, I definitely recommend you use one-to-one -one previews. Now, there is a little workaround that if you're worried about disk space and one-to-one -one previews. And what you would do is import them as one-to-one. -one. And what you'll find if you're like me, let's say you went to the zoo, you might take a thousand images at the zoo. You would import those into Lightroom, create one-to-one -one previews. It's going to take a really long time. So you go get something to eat, come back. You're your, everything's imported, you're going to start processing those images. You might process those images for a day or two, maybe a week, but then you're going to probably forget about them and you're not going to return to those images for a while. So you really don't need those one-to-one -one previews anymore if you're not going back to that folder for, you know, after a few days. So what you would do, now I have a Mac, I go up to the top menu, Lightroom. If you have a PC, this is under Edit, and you're going to go down to Catalog Settings. And when you're at Catalog Settings, if you go to File Handling, you'll see there's a drop-down right here, Automatically Discard One-to-One -one Previews, and I have it set to After 30 Days. You could set that to After One Day, After One Week, or After 30 Days. So this helps, or never for that matter, this helps you make sure that you're not using up a ton of disk space. Uh, you're using the one-to-one -one previews right when you import the file. Maybe if you, 
you know, process your images for a week. This is good for you wedding photographers. You might process the images for a wedding for a week. Then that wedding's over. You're not going back to it ever again. So you could discard those one-to-one -one previews after one week, and that will save disk space. So that's something to uh, think about. Uh, that will really help Lightroom run much quicker if you generate one-to-one -one previews when you import them. And then if you want to save disk space, discard them after 30 days. Now, the other thing I mentioned, when you're importing one-to-one -one previews, it's also creating standard previews. And you should optimize your standard preview size. Your standard preview size should match the size of your monitor, the width of your monitor. Now you can see I'm using an iMac. It's a 27 inch iMac and it's 27 inch iMac and it's a few years old. It's not a retina display iMac. So its screen dimensions are 2560 by 1440. You can see if I open this drop down, it has auto 2560. That means that Lightroom sensed that my monitor is oh, has a 2560 width. Whatever your monitor width is in pixels, you should pick here. Hopefully it will automatically sense it and pick that. That way the previews will be optimized for your monitor. You don't want to create previews that are actually smaller than your monitor because then Lightroom's going to have to generate a preview that's going to fit your monitor. So make sure that you have that to the exact width of your monitor if possible. Also, you'll see preview quality. If you have a very large display, like 27 inch, 30 something inch, or whatever, you might find that it takes a while for it to really render on your monitor because your monitor is so big. So you might want to take the preview quality off of high and put it either on medium or low. Now on the other hand, if you're using an 11 inch laptop, don't worry about it, keep it on high because it's not using a lot of computing power to, power to fill up that 11 inch screen. So that will help it run faster. So keep that in mind, and this is all under catalog settings. The other thing I want to talk about is in this metadata tab, Automatic, automatically write changes to XMP. You can see I have that checked. By default, that is not checked. So when that is not checked and you're editing a raw file, the edits are being written to the Lightroom catalog. That is the most efficient way to do it. If though, you take that raw file out of that folder and you, you email it to someone and say, look at this raw file, I just edited it, edited it. I just processed it, how's that? Well, they're not gonna see your edits because they're in your Lightroom catalog. So what you have to do is you have to create an XMP file to send with it. The XMP file is a sidecar file that is kept in the same folder as the raw file and all the edits are actually written into the XMP file as well as the catalog. And then you could share the raw file with the XMP file and people will see your edits. Well, if that is checked like I have it, it takes Lightroom time to write the XMP file even though it's a tiny, tiny file. I mean, it's kilobytes. Even though it's so small, it still takes Lightroom time to access the drive, write the file, make sure the file's uh, not corrupt, and you know, you're, it just takes time. So, so that could slow down your computer too. So if you don't need XMP files for anything, uncheck that box. I like it checked because I like writing those sidecar files. If I ever need to use the raw file in a program outside of an Adobe program that doesn't read the Lightroom catalog, then it will read the XMP file. That's why I have it checked. So that's another thing you could check into. So we're gonna close down catalog settings. The next thing you could do to help Lightroom's performance is go to the preferences uh, of Lightroom. And in a Mac, it's under the Lightroom menu. If you have a PC, it's under the edit menu. And we'll go to preferences. What we wanna do is we wanna go to file handling. And you can see down here, it says camera raw cache settings. By default, that maximum size will be one gigabyte. I guarantee that's not large enough. Increase that as large as you can make it really. Uh, Adobe recommends, even though they have by default, they keep that at one gigabyte. They recommend you have that at least 10 gigabytes. I have it at 40. Most people I know that have laptops with limited uh, RAM or they are limited, I'm sorry, disk space, they still will keep that at at least 10 gigabytes. So try to get that up as high as possible. That will really help Lightroom run 
much more uh, efficiently. Um, if after you do that and you find Lightroom's running much better, then after maybe a few months it starts slowing down a little, purge the cache. That will just probably help it too. So keep that as large as possible. I have a lot of disk space. You see I'm only using 11% of my disk space up here. So, you know, I don't care. 40 gigabytes is fine and it works great. Now, the other thing you could take a look at is performance. You can see right here under Camera Raw, it says Use Graphics Processor. On my iMac, that's not checked because I used to have that checked and Lightroom locked up all the time. I mean, continually locked up on me. As soon as I uncheck that, Lightroom's run smoothly. So, if Lightroom is locking up on you and acting wacky, and you notice you have that checked, just try unchecking it and see if Lightroom runs any better. On my MacBook, it's checked and it runs fine. Checked on my MacBook. Now, on the other hand, if Lightroom is running sluggish and you look under this performance tab and this is not checked, try checking it. It may help Lightroom run a little quicker. Hopefully it doesn't lock up. <laughs> so try it. Like, on, like I mentioned, on my MacBook, it's checked and it makes Lightroom run noticeably faster because it's checked. Now, on some computers, this will be grayed out and you won't be able to check it. That's because Lightroom is sensing what your computer is using for graphics and knows that it's not compatible with the acceleration software that's included in Lightroom. So that might be grayed out and there's nothing you could do about it. So try this checked, unchecked, and see if Lightroom runs a little better with that. Now, the other thing you could do is... You could create smart previews to edit, and I shouldn't have closed that, I'm sorry. Let's open up preferences again. And you can see right here in the develop, or underneath the graphics processor, it says use smart previews instead of originals for image editing. And it tells you right here, this will, in will allow increased performance, but may display decreased quality while editing. Final output will remain full size quality. So. It will make Lightroom run much faster, but what you'll be looking at as you're editing will be of lower quality. But when you export it, it will be exported high quality, so you don't have to worry about that. So this, I would say, is a last resort. I would create use a smart preview for image editing. Now that does take up disk space. Uh, smart previews take up more disk space than uh, a normal preview would. So keep that in mind too. If you have limited disk space, you may not want to use smart previews. So that too will help you run a little quicker. Now, the final thing I want to talk about is a lot of people don't even know this is there. If you go under the file menu and you go down to optimize catalog and we click on that, you can see I just optimized my catalog today. What happens is we're we're continually adding images into Lightroom, we're deleting images, we're processing images, we're moving images from folder to folder, we're creating, uh, we're creating uh, different, uh, you know, types of, um, of folders in Lightroom and stuff like that. And when you keep doing that, Lightroom's catalog tends to get disorganized in a way where it's not as uh, efficient for Lightroom to run. So you optimize it now and then. And it doesn't hurt anything. You could run this every day if you want. It's not going to hurt anything. But I recommend if you use Lightroom a lot, like you're in it every day, you're adding images every day, you're doing normal stuff every day in Lightroom, I recommend that you run that at least once every two weeks. On the other hand, if you're only in Lightroom once a month, then just run it a couple times a year. You know, So it's really up to you. And it, like I said, it doesn't hurt anything to run that quite often. Uh, it, it will help Lightroom run a little better and help your catalog stay organized and hopefully everything will run smoother in the long run. So that's it. Just some tips to help you optimize the performance of Lightroom. I hope that uh, helps your Lightroom run much better. And uh, that's it for episode 92. Thank you everyone that watches my videos. I truly do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.